There's been an important update on Sir Jim Ratcliffe and Ineos's potential bid to buy Manchester United after confirmation this afternoon from Bloomberg Business about Jim Ratcliffe, Ineos and Goldman Sachs and working together, debt refinancing. There's going to be some words in here that might be, you know, red flags for a lot of you. But let me please explain it all inside this video. It's an important update that we need to discuss here as a community. So you let me know what you think in the comments below after you've watched it. But the one thing I want to say at the very, very beginning of this video, right, when I'm talking about Sir Jim Ratcliffe, when I'm talking about Qatari interest, Saudi interest, any interest in Manchester United, the absolute number one thing at the top of every single list is making sure that the debt is cleared for Manchester United. That is, no matter who your thoughts on who the right owners are, and, the, the, and we can have arguments all day long about that, that one same thing exists. Whoever it is that comes in, they have to clear the debt. You can talk about uh, Jim Ratcliffe and what's happened at Nice and, and, and the problems there. You can talk about Qatar and the problems that would exist there and Dubai and everything else. But it's number one priority for United fans with our new owners is clearing the debt. We all know that we could be more of a self-sustainable club if we could spend our own money. We can't do that because of the debt that's been leveraged on this club since the Glazers took over. So that's why this is a very important update here from Bloomberg Business. Let me run through this for you and we can discuss it as a community. They are reporting that Jim Ratcliffe is going to be working alongside Goldman Sachs and is also going to be bringing on JP Morgan in an advisory, uh, in an advisory position, right? Let me read through the article for you here. British billionaire Jim Ratcliffe has lined up banks, including the Goldman Sachs group, to provide debt financing for a bid to buy Manchester United, a person familiar with the matter said. The banks are prepared to back a takeover offer with bonds and loans, according to the person, who asked not to be identified. If a bid is made, the banks will cover the value of Manchester United's existing debt, which stands at roughly $800 million, and potentially go much higher. Goldman Sachs is also advising Ratcliffe alongside JP Morgan as he studies the feasibility of an offer for Manchester United. One more bit here. Deliberations are ongoing and there's no certainty that Ratcliffe, who is chairman of Ineos, will decide to proceed with a bid or that banks will commit to financing one. Representatives for Goldman Sachs, Ineos and JP Morgan declined to comment. Now, I know full well that for quite a lot of you, this is going to raise some immediate alarm bells. Debt refinancing, bonds, loans. These are the sorts of terminology that we want to move away from having dealt with it with the Glazers for years and years and years. But let me quickly explain what this is suggesting. This is suggesting there that Jim Ratcliffe and Ineos will work alongside, well, in agreement with Goldman Sachs on debt refinancing. On debt financing, sorry. Now, from a definition perspective for anybody here, look, debt financing occurs when a firm raises money for working capital or capital expenditures by selling debt instruments. Effectively, what this is, right? This would be, let me get a picture of uh, Jim Ratcliffe up here. That would be a little bit more appropriate. This would be Ineos and Jim Ratcliffe absorbing that debt. Not clearing it. Per, I mean, it technically would be cleared. It would be cleared out of Manchester United's books and it would be moved into Ineos's books. I suppose you can call it an investment. It would mean that the debt would be cleared off Manchester United. We would now not be liable for that debt. And it will go to Ineos on the terms that they agree with Goldman Sachs. So all of Manchester United's debt in itself would be absorbed. Debt refinancing would, ha debt refinancing would happen. And the debt would be transferred from Manchester United to Ineos as the new owners of the club. That, that, that debt would then sit on Ineos's books, not Manchester United's books. So in that sense, yes, the debt would be cleared. That's why it's called debt refinancing. Now, as I said, for, for a lot of United fans, this is going to scream immediate alarm bells because of the idea. I mean, it's something that some United fans have, uh, have said this whole way through. Does Jim Ratcliffe have enough money to buy Manchester United and I suppose bring in the level of spending that so many United fans feel that we need and that you kind of do need you see what Chelsea have done in January you see when I mean even, even not in Forest that he spent 200 mil curiously enough actually uh Bloomberg say down here look 
that Jim Ratcliffe is actually worth $13 billion today. And I've, it's something I've maintained the entire way through. And as is the case here, as has been said there, any purchase of Manchester United by Ineos would be Ineos, not Jim Ratcliffe. It wouldn't be going down as his own personal purchase. Now, if you want to speak, I suppose, a bit more openly about the idea of these names here, JP Morgan, well, you know full well what JP Morgan have been involved in previously. Look, in January, JP Morgan submitted separate proposals to provide debt finance to Serie A. In recent times, the JP Morgan also acted for the Glazers on the sale of some shares. They were also involved in the European Super, no, it was, sorry, JP Morgan were involved in the Super League when they emerged as the bank that were backing the plans for it. So I understand that this is going to strike fear into some United fans because ultimately what United fans want is for the debt to be wiped, for a new stadium to be built, for Manchester United to be able to sustainably spend the money that we create. Our revenues are still nearly 700 million per year. If we're a better run football club without having all these interest payments on our debt every single year, we'd have so much more to spend on ourselves. And that is effectively what this would do. The debt financed would be... It, I, I can't give you the, uh, the, the correct terminology because I'm not a financial expert. But the debt would be moved from Manchester United to Ineos, if I'm understanding this correctly. And I'll try and bring on, um, maybe I can speak to Kieran Maguire uh, from Price of Football. We've had him here on the channel a couple of times. I'm sure he'd be able to explain this in a little bit more detail, correct detail, more so than I can. But I reiterate the point I made at the very, very start of the video is that we can have arguments all day long, all week long. It doesn't... About who the best new owner is for Manchester United and the pros and cons of Jim Ratcliffe. I've done a deep dive into his ownership of Nice and looked at the pros and looked at the cons. I've spoken about Dubai. I've spoken about Qatar. I've spoken about Saudi Arabia. I've spoken about Apple, Amazon, Harrison Blitzer. I really have covered every single potential new owner from hopefully as many angles as I possibly can. And I'm sure there will be more videos to come. But the overarching priority, no matter who that new owner is, is making sure that this new era that we're about to go into, Manchester United, go into it debt-free. And for so many of you, that's why this idea of oil money, that's why this idea of going and becoming state-owned is better, because that debt would just be wiped out, no doubt, because their funds are, well, Unimaginable, unimaginable, really, by comparison. But by the looks of it, if Ineos was to submit a bid to buy Manchester United, remember by this, I mean, it's probably not like a massively harsh and heavy deadline, but next Friday, that's when the rain group want official bids into Manchester United so we can be on time and on target for that full sale by the end of Q1, by the end of March and the start of April. So they want bids in by next Friday. If that happens and Ineos do go down that path, it sounds like they're going to be in some way, shape or form in partnership with Goldman Sachs who are willing. And the interesting part there, it says they are willing to cover the value of Manchester United's existing debt, $800 million, and potentially go much higher. Does that indicate there that maybe that they would be able and willing to loan Ineos the money that wouldn't necessarily that wouldn't be a leverage buyout, by the way. That wouldn't be that wouldn't be debt that would be forced onto Manchester United. That would be debt that would go to Ineos. Trust me, there are definite. I understand there's definite red flags here. I'm just bringing you the news. I'm trying to be as impartial as possible, but I will say that one more time. Whoever comes in, the new owner, we have to make sure Manchester United is debt free. For you, you let me know in the comments. Does this is this something that would sit right with you? Is this something that completely rules out the idea of Jim Ratcliffe? As I said, it will be the, as far as I can see, it's the debt coming off Manchester United's books and going on to Ineos's. So the responsibility and the liability of it and the interest payments of it are not United's anymore. It would be Ineos's and, and part of the overall ownership and investment of buying Man United. You let me know what you think. I consider this really quite an important update on Jim Ratcliffe, who is the only person so far to come forward with that formal interest. 
So this, I think, is a really important talking point. You can let me know what you think in the comments, as you always do.